Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. And this evening, friends, wanted to go and examine a little bit more about the coronavirus. We're going to be looking tonight at the epicenter uh, or the different disputed epicenters, we might uh, say, Wuhan being the one Western media has uh, portrayed the entire time. And of course, also evidence that has been uh, submitted by both Japanese and Chinese officials that the epicenter may have actually been from the United States. Um, for, forget the idea of whether or not this is a bioweapon or whether or not it is a real genuine virus. Nonetheless, uh, it has got some very deadly consequences and it is causing more than just deadly consequences. It is causing rippling effects across the world. In so much as we see here on RT News, and I'd gotten this originally from uh, Renza, a good friend of mine in the Netherlands there, uh, had already sent me the information that the United States was canceling its, uh, its or at least canceling or, or, or postponing their particular uh, um, 2020 Defender exercise, which had a massive, the largest ever uh, NATO drills is being postponed as a result of the COVID virus and the concerns of the spread of this virus to, to becoming even worse. Uh, and it's not just with just the, the, the canceling of that. There's all types of things that are being changed and going on. In fact, even the conference with uh, Zen Garcia that we'd been invited to speak to almost two years ago, uh, even Zen's conference is being uh, looked at as being postponed. Not been postponed as of yet, but a good possibility that it may be. And that's only a couple of weeks away originally. Uh, something that would probably be better uh, in, in the long run. But I even the other day, I was up at Walmart, and while I was there, of course, picking up some cat litter, just had a couple of items to pick up, and, and the lines were grueling at Walmart. But I took some photos because I figured, well, you know, people need to realize that, you know, having a little bit of food stocked up is not a bad idea, especially in light of the fact that schools are being canceled, uh, all in, in the state of Florida, many other states as well. Uh, kids are going to be home. They're extending spring break to two weeks. There are a lot of uh, businesses that are looking at not being operable during this time. So when I was at Walmart, of course, like Publix and many other, boy, I was shocked to see it. It was like hurricane season here. Like suddenly the Cat 5 hurricane is about to come on shore and everybody forgot to buy the food. But the funny thing was, though, was like in the case of meat and dairy. Normally, those products are never taken really off the shelf during a hurricane because they know they're going to lose their refrigeration and wouldn't have it anyway. But those types of items were gone as well, of course, like, uh, and I'm not sure, I think this is the water aisle there. Uh, all the water was already gone and they've been restocking since then. But, you know, the point was is that uh, paper towels, cleaning supplies, you name it, even the canned good aisles, and I'd actually photograph both sides. I didn't include it in tonight's broadcast here, but I'd photograph both sides of the aisle there totally empty and shared it with some of my friends there to let them know this is serious. You know, I mean, if you're looking to make sure, and when I say serious, what I'm talking about is if in the event the government decides to do a quarantine uh, or no travel or become more restrictive, which some things that President Trump has spoken about is kind of hinted in that direction, you could be left in a situation that you would need food at home uh, and the basic essentials to be able to take care of your family while this is all going on. Of course, it seems like in Florida beaches, nobody is thinking about the, corona, uh, uh, the coronavirus. They're all out there in the huge droves. So I'm sure it'll definitely be passed quite more frequently out there, especially, well, I won't go into all that. But the one thing that I did notice, though, at Walmart was as I went near the front, they had this shelf stock slap full of Corona beer. That's definitely not selling out. Maybe people are worried about Corona name on the beer. I don't know. But nonetheless, the Corona beer was not sold out. Uh, another thing I thought was interesting as well was... Uh, we live close to the airport, so I decided to do a little circle around the airport. Now, I don't know if this picture really does this justice or not, uh, but if you have any idea, which I know you can't see it, they'd closed the main parking garage, and that line was just the tail end. As far as the eye could see, these were rental cars being returned. And even the traffic in Orlando is like unbelievably and unusually 
very light now. I never realized how many people come here for Disney World or all the attractions that Orlando has, but they were all bailing out and leaving in droves. So the point is, the virus has become a very serious situation around the world, and in so much that military drills are being canceled. Uh, might save America a little bit of money that way, but we're going to be spending money in other ways. Another thing, though, that was very concerning, and this was posted by ABC's WFAAA, WFAA, excuse me, by Jason Whiteley, says passengers are stuck in long lines for immigration and tell us there are no offers of hand sanitizers, gloves, or masks from U.S. Customs and Immigration. Travelers say they've had no screenings of temperature yet and no one following coronavirus protocols. These are all the people going back home to wherever, whatever country they're from. So it seems like the U.S. not really worried about any type of protection or uh, just kind of get them out of the country, I guess. That's the attitude. It's really kind of sad. We shouldn't treat visitors to the United States in this regard. But let's take a more serious look. One of my good friends, and I won't say which one in this particular case here, because I think it'd be a little bit safer not to even say which intelligence source I got this from, but I was given some articles to take a very close look at. And this one right here from Frederick News Post about U.S. Marid uh, company here in the United States that was shut down. They are a biochemical weapon company, excuse me, not bioweapon, but they, they deal with bio diseases, handling of bio diseases. Uh, this article came out on August 2nd of 2019 from, it's uh, called Fort Detrick Lab Shutdown After Failed Safety Inspections, All Research Halted Indefinitely. Now, according to this article right here, though, they're already back up and running. Uh, this uh, just came out, well, actually, it said one hour ago, but it's been a couple hours since uh, I actually pulled this article up. It says the USA Marid Viral Immunology Chief explains a new coronavirus. But here's what's really strange in all this. As we begin to examine the epicenter for the coronavirus, there is referrals from the article here on, um, on China's media. Actually, Global Research is quoting this one here, but I think it's from another article. Uh, China's coronavirus, a shocking update, did the virus originate in the U.S., is the question that is being asked by Global Research. They go into some very in-depth look by both Japanese and Chinese uh, uh, scientists regarding this. Even including, and I'll go into this case, these cases here in just a little bit here with you, but as you get down later in the article, they're citing a couple of cases in the United States, one in particular on February 26, ABC's news affiliate KJCT8 News Network reported that a woman recently told the media that her sister died on from coronavirus infection, Montrose, Colorado resident uh, Almita Stone said that the medical staff kept us informed that it was the flu. And when I got the death certificate, there was a coronavirus in the cause of death. Well, that does make you begin to look. And of course, my own sources there give me one of the smoking guns, as it were. Uh, the very place, as they mention here, they're telling you all about the coronavirus, right? And let me just share with you what the article says here. This is the one that came out today. Now, they're saying here, SARS-CoV-2, the new coronavirus that first started appearing around December in 2019, may be novel, but coronaviruses are not. There are four human coronaviruses circulating in the United States outside of the SARS-CoV-2, said John Dye, chief of the Viral Immunology Division at the U.S. Army Medical Research Institute Infectious Diseases. Those coronaviruses can cause mild symptoms, like a cold. But there, are, there have been three spillover events, as he goes on to say here. Uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome caused by SARS-CoV-2 in 2003. Middle East respiratory syndrome caused by MERS-CoV-2 in 2012. And the current SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVID-19. Well, this lab ought to know because, as I said, according to the uh, article here posted by the Frederick News Post, uh, back in August the 2nd of 2019, 
they were being shut down for failed safety inspection and all research it had been halted and let's look at reasons why all the research at Fort De uh, Dietrich laboratory that handles high level disease causing materials such as Ebola is on hold indefinitely after the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention found the organization failed to meet biosafety standards. That's a little bit concerning to me. Uh, non, no infectious pathogens or disease causing materials have been found outside authorized areas at the U.S. Army Medical Research Institute of the Infection. No infection, infectious pathogens or diseases, uh, disease causing materials have been found outside the authorized areas at the U.S. Army Medical Research Institute of Infectious Diseases. That seems convenient, doesn't it? But it is kind of odd that if we look at that and then we look at this article here, which we'll try to blow this up. I had a hard time with this article earlier, so I don't know how well. Let's see here. Okay, maybe we can get it a little bit bigger here for you guys. There we go. There we go. Now we can see it a lot better. Where in the article right here shows on February 26, ABC's news affiliate KJCT8 News Network reported that a woman recently told the media that her sister died from a coronavirus infection. That was February 26 that this was told about this year, right? But there's also another case here where they speak about the virologist further stated that the U.S. has recently had more than 200 uh, pulmonary fibrosis cases that resulted in death due to the patient's inability to breathe, but whose conditions and symptoms could not explain uh, be, be explained by pulmonary fibrosis. He said he wrote articles informing the U.S. health authorities to consider seriously those deaths as resulting from the coronavirus, but they responded by blaming the deaths on e-cigarettes and then silenced further discussion. All right. Also, it says he stated the case in September of 2019 where some Japanese traveled to Hawaii and returned home infected, people who had never been to China. This was two months prior to the infections in China. All right. So the question is really coming down to where does it actually begin at? And of course, as we go back to the particular um, U.S. Army Medical Research uh, Institute here, it says here, we go on and look at some of the other issues there. The CDC sent a cease and desist order in July. After USA uh, Marid received the order from the CDC, its registration with the Federal Select Agent Program, which oversees diseases causing material use and possession, was suspended. That suspension effectively halted all biological select agents and toxins research, and, AS and USA Marid vendor Linden said in her email. The Federal Select Agent Program does not comment on whether the program, such as USA uh, Marid is registered and cannot come in on action taken to enforce regulations, Catherine Harbin, a spokeswoman for the CDC, wrote in an email. Uh, as situations warrant, Federal Select Agent Program will take whatever appropriate actions necessary to resolve the departures from regulatory compliance in order to help ensure the safe and security of work with select agents and toxins, Harbin said in the email. But the thing is, is you got to keep in mind these people are dealing with those types of diseases, as I pointed out as well. Recently in their new article, the new article that came out, they're discussing everything about the coronavirus inside of their own writings here. And by the way, I ended up getting a meter here to be able to determine uh, the EMF issues that we have. It looks like uh, definitely is a targeting situation going on in my office and with my cell phone particularly. So we're having to try to take some precautions there. Anyway. There are four human coronaviruses circulating in the United States. Uh, okay, never mind. We already read all that part there. But the point is, is that they're very familiar with the coronavirus. He says that's why, uh, that's what uh, Ridmid is for, the drug Gilead scientists created for Ebola with the help from the USA Marid does. Gilead is now looking at the uh, remdesivir in treating COVID-19 by preventing SARS-CoV-2 from being able to replicate Die said. That clearly shows us, though, this company, even before they're shut down, were no doubt working with the coronavirus as well. So, what really happened? 
was it a leak? Some sources I have had, and I can't go into this, but uh, have clearly indicated this was intentionally released. Now, even if it did happen in the United States, let's say this lab is where the epicenter really is. I don't say that it is. I can't say that. I'm not a scientist. I have no way of doing that. But it is kind of interesting how that it can be so convenient to find a way to allow the virus to come out somewhere else as quickly as possible to make it look like some other nation is guilty of the epicenter. I know that sounds hard to believe, but believe me, if you're causing a world pandemic, you definitely don't want to be the country that looks like you started it all. That would become a global financial disaster for the United States. Not to mention, China is a superpower rising in the making and an economic force to be reasoned with. And we certainly can't allow China to outdo the United States. Maybe this is some of the reasoning behind all of this. Can't really say. Let's take a look at the article, though, that was sent to me. Uh, again, this was from um, Global Research. And it states in here, the Western media quickly took the stage and laid out the official narrative for the outbreak of the new coronavirus, which appeared to have begun in China, claiming to have or originated with animals at a wet market uh, in Wuhan, actually a seafood market. In fact, the origin was for a long time unknown, but appears likely now to, according to Chinese and Japanese reports, that the virus originated elsewhere from multiple locations, but began to spread widely only after introduced to the market. More to point, it appears that the virus did not originate in China, according to reports in Japanese and other media, have, may have originated in the U.S. After collecting samples of the genome in China, medical researchers first conclusively demonstrated that the virus did not originate at the seafood market, but had multiple unidentified sources, after which it was exposed to the seafood market from where it spread everywhere. And of course, crowded seafood market like they have in, in uh, China there, which all the doors being shut at this particular point here, made it very easily for the virus to spread very rapidly throughout all areas of China. Said a new study by the Chinese research indicates the novel coronavirus may have begun human to human transmission in late November from a place other than the human seafood market in Wuhan. The study published in China, uh, Shiv, a Chinese open repository for scientific research reveals the new coronavirus was introduced to the seafood market from another lo from other locations and then spread rapidly from the market to a large number of close contacts. The findings were the results of the analysis uh, for the genome data sources of infection and the route to spread the variations of the novel coronavirus collected through China. Now, also from what I understand as well, they tried to get the United States to cooperate in the investigation, offering up the samples that they have, but the U.S. would not do it. Chinese medical authorities and intelligence agencies then conducted a rapid and wide-ranging search for the, or, the origin of virus, collecting nearly 100 samples of the genome from 12 different countries and four continents, identifying all varieties and mutations during this research. They determined the virus outbreak had begun much earlier, probably in November, shortly after the Wuhan military games, and then came to the same independent conclusions of the Japanese researchers that the virus did not begin in China, but was introduced there from an outside source. We also read that if the authorities pursued their analysis through 100 genome samples from 12 countries, they must have had a compelling reason to be searching for the original source outside of China. This would explain why there was such a difficulty in locating and identifying a, a, a patient zero. In February of 2020, the Japanese Ashai News Report Print and TV claim the coronavirus originated in the U.S. and not in China, that some or many of the 14,000 American deaths attributed to influenza may have, in fact, have, been, have resulted from the coronavirus. Which actually kind of led me to believe as well, one friend of ours that had ended up very, very sick, we had wondered at the time whether or not they had been infected with the coronavirus. Never was any word about that, but made us wonder about that. 
On February 14th, the U.S. Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, said they will begin to test individuals for influenza-like illnesses for the novel coronavirus at a public health labs in Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle, Chicago, and New York City. The TV Ashe Network presented scientific documentation for their claims, raising the issue that no one would know the cause of death because the U.S. either neglected to test or failed to release the results. Doesn't, sound, doesn't surprise you, though, does it? These claims stirred up a hornet's nest, not only in Japan, but in China, immediately going viral on Chinese social media, especially since military uh, world games were held in Wuhan in October, and it already had been widely discussed that the virus could have been transmitted at that time from a foreign source. Uh, Shen Yi, an international relations professor in Shanghai's Fundan University, stated that the global virologists, including the intelligence agencies, were tracking the origin of the virus. Also of interest of the Chinese government did not shut the door on this, the news reported stated. Now, it's kind of interesting they state that, though, because in one particular case, and this was this one right here, uh, this was reported by um, the Washington Examiner, and I don't know how trustworthy the Washington examiner, uh, examiner is, but says the coronavirus doctor who warned the epidemic dies after con contracting the illness. I thought that was kind of a strange death. A Chinese doctor who attempted to warn public about the deadly coronavirus outbreak in Wuhan, China, has died after contracting the mysterious Ill illness according to local reports. Li Wenliang and the uh, apothemologist of Wuhan Center Hospital posted seven cases of SARS confirmed to be the social media platform WeChat on December 30th, 2019, and was subsequently punished by the Chinese government for his actions, and he later contracted the illness himself. The Chinese government actually made him apologize, et cetera, et cetera. So, Kind of makes me wonder when you look at these things here. Trying to keep a balance in this, I guess we should say. This here is the uh, Japanese doctor uh, or the Japanese scientist that is explaining, I think he's a virologist, uh, the, the, the research behind the study to try to find out where the epicenter actually was, was uh, conducted at. And uh, more of his graphs and charts explaining these things, how the virus moved, etc., what they had done to try to narrow down those areas. It goes on to say, one of his main points is that type infecting Taiwan exists only in Australia and the U.S. And since uh, Taiwan was not infected by the Australians, the infection in Taiwan could have come only from the U.S. Let me back up just a little bit on that. Maybe we should include this right here, so I'll include this as well. The man in the video is a top virologist and pharma pharmacologist who performed a long and detailed search for the source of the virus. He spends the first part of the video explaining the various uh, haplotypes, varieties, if you will, and explains how they are related to each other, how one must have uh, come before another, and how the type derived from another he explains this merely in elementary science and nothing to do with geopolitical issues, describing how just with numbers in order uh, must always, uh, three must always follow two. Then he goes on to say, that Taiwan ex uh, exists only in Australia, and the, or excuse me, one of his main points is that type infecting Taiwan only exists in Australia and the U.S., and of course, it didn't come from the Australians. The basic logic is that the geographical location with the greatest diversity of virus strains must be original source because of a single strain cannot emerge from nothing. Uh, he just demonstrated that the U.S. has only five known strains, um, something else that I should have brought out for you as well. The U.S. only has five, uh, five known strains of the virus, while Wuhan, most of China, have only one, as do Taiwan and South Korea, Thailand and Vietnam and Singapore and England and Belgium and Germany, constituting a thesis that the haplotypes in other nations may have originated in the U.S. The point is there's multiple types out there. And with China only having access to one, as well as these other countries, it seems to be more apparent that the virus had to have originated from the U.S. because of the multiple strands that are out there. Korea and Taiwan have a difficult, uh, have a different haplotype and the virus that, than China, perhaps more ineffective but much less deadly, which would account for a death rate of only one-third that of China. 
Uh, he goes on, due to the enormous amount of Western media coverage focused on China, much of the world believes the coronavirus spread to all the nations from China. But this now appears to have been proven wrong. With about 50 nations scattered throughout the world, uh, having identified at least one case at a time of writing, it would be very interesting to examine the virus samples from each of those nations to determine their location, origin, and worldwide sources and patterns of spread. The virologists further stated that the U.S. has recently had more than 200, which we went into this earlier, about the pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, but we know that he was brought to a dead end when it comes to the U.S. trying to discuss that. He stated the case in September 29, where some Japanese traveled to Hawaii and returned home infected. People who have had, had never been to China, this was two months prior to the infections in China. And just after the CDC suddenly told, totally shut down the Fort Detrick bioweapons lab, claiming the facilities were insufficient to pre uh, prevent loss of pathogens. So that's where, right there, that's, the, that's, that's your smoking gun right there, the Dietrich Bioweb uh, uh, Weapons Lab. And of course, they identified here that it is a bioweapons lab. That's right there at Fort Dietrich, the U.S. Omrid, the company that was shut down. And of course, now is glorif being glorified today uh, of knowing and understanding the, the, the coronavirus in the first place. So the question is, where is that epicenter? And what about these other deaths, for example, too? That's another issue, too, in the, in the article here. You have uh, uh, Almeida Stone, which, by the way, I could not find that article any longer on KGCTA, uh, their website, uh, gets a death certificate that their sister died of the coronavirus. Uh, there was another one as well, and I don't know where that's at, but there's actually two cases in America that were exactly the same. The autopsy result came back coronavirus. That was long before it was actually identified in Wuhan. Is it coincidence or something else? Not really sure. At any rate, uh, a couple other things I want to cover with you real quick before we uh, ch change over here. But, but before I do, let me uh, mention to you as well. We had said in a recent video as well, vitamin C, and I wanted to bring these up here. This is the one type of vitamin C that we thought is a really good vitamin C to help you as a liposoma uh, to protect against this virus. Not only against it, if you get it, if you can't get it in an IV, that is about the most powerful form you could possibly get. We don't sell this or anything like that. We don't promote it other than the fact to say, for the sake of those that are watching the program, tuning in, we want you to be aware of some things that at least we think that might at least help your immunity to build your immune system up even greater. Another thing as well, and this is very inexpensive, you can order it online. Uh, I didn't want to speak about it until I got it in to make sure it was the right one. This is a mesh nebulizer, uh, and this turns the, uh, if you, depending on what solution you're using in there, uh, that's something you might want to check with a doctor on uh, or a medical professional that knows about nebulizers, but it's good for respiratory. Uh, we would probably use ourselves silver, but that's a different issue there. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different things you could actually use in there, but that's something, like I said, you have to consult a metal, medical professional. But because it does it in nanoparticles, it helps clear the respiratory system much better. How effective it would be with COVID-19, I have no idea, no clue whatsoever. But I think it's something that maybe you should check into, check with your doctor to see what their thoughts are on this. Uh, moving on with some other news as well. This is something that was put out by uh, uh, Ro Rojava on Twitter. Uh, it's a very sad uh, story here. And this is what the Turkish-backed jihadists do. Uh, th there was an article here. Our, our video that was brought out on, on the news over there in Syria. And in this here, this mother and father describe what happened to their son when he was taken prisoner uh, by uh, Turkish-backed uh, fighters uh, there in uh, Syria. Uh, of course, he is part of the Kurdish, he's apart from a Kurdish family. But they abuse this man so much, so violently, uh, his feet, he can't walk now. His feet were burned by them. His back was burned by them. He was raped by these uh, these savage people, and he's completely lost his mind as a result. Uh, very very disturbing to see what happened to this poor uh, young man. He just 
It really has affected him in a, in, a, in a tremendous way. We wanted to bring attention to people about that. So that I ask everyone to watch this video of Aras, a young deaf mute man from Efron, uh, Ef uh, Efron who was kidnapped by Erdogan. And so, and I, I forgot about that part too. He is, he's, he's a deaf mute. And uh, he was kidnapped by Erdogan's mercenaries and tortured in medieval ways. He is now insane. He can't walk no more as they burned his feet, his back. They raped him and impaled him, destroying everything inside. You know, this is what we get with the Western back agenda of destroying Syria. Uh, also, another thing, too, to bring, up, bring to your attention here, uh, the United States doing drills here in the U.S., it was spotted on the drive, uh, a new nuclear bomb loaded on the bottom of the plane there, uh, that uh, very powerful weapon that the United States has there. Uh, they're, I guess they're testing it. Exercise red flag is underway with the U.S. and some of its tightest allies fighting a mock air war over the Nevada test and training range in southern Nevada, either in conjunction with the exercise or independent of it. But anyway, it was found on there. The, uh, the, it's long-running B-61 series of nuclear bombs, a precision-guided B-61-12. Uh, uh, it's like the U.S. is not playing games or whatever they're preparing for. And I would imagine that exercise has Iran written all over it. Uh, and this here, update first casualties reported from last latest rocket attack on Iraqi bases hosting U.S. troops. Uh, this was uh, just put out uh, today. Well, it's interesting. This is the very, uh, very story we brought to you, I think, two days ago. So even Amon News just now bringing this information out, something that our own uh, Middle East source had given us two days ago when this all happened, uh, being able to, to say, because he had mentioned to us that there was high casualties at the time. I think it was six uh, casualties. Two of those casualties were actually Iraqi soldiers. Uh, very very serious situation going on in Iraq as we speak there right now. Uh, also now the Id, uh, in Idlib, this is Turkey. Uh, they're getting ready to try to clear the roads and stuff. The one corridor that Turkey and Russia are supposed to patrol together in Idlib. Uh, and it definitely looks like from what uh, they're saying is this going to be a very, very, very difficult time for the Turkish military to be able to do much of anything in this region. Uh, but who knows? They do have the backing of the uh, all the terrorists in the region there, so I would say they'd probably get a, do a pretty good job. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for watching the broadcast tomorrow. We'll be coming on again, but we're going to probably be going into some teachings again. We also we posted a, a teaching up, the one you were watching live here on Israeli News Live, that is on Danoon Institute. Uh, if you want to be able to see the screen much better, what we were posting there and the scriptures and things like that. Patreon as well. We've loaded a video over there on Patreon. Uh, Israeli News Live, and I'll try to put a link in the description below for those of you that are looking for that channel, don't know how to find it, uh, and it uh, looks like we'll be putting together another one here within the next uh, two or three days, again on Patreon, sharing some more insights. i got a special guest coming on also this week, Monday, in a very special broadcast, so be tuning into Israeli News Live, watching for it. I never kind of release that information because as it is, we're targeted anyway. And now I know for a fact we are targeted. I'm Stephen Benin. You're watching Israeli News Live in a world of Ain Shalom. There is no peace. Good evening.